my favorite restaurant there in Atlanta. And I'm joined by John Gladwin. He's the band leader of The Last Typhoon and singer, songwriter, recording artist, film guy. <laughs> Thank you so much for making the time. Hey, thanks for having me. It's, it's great to be here at there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So, tell me a little bit about how you ended up in Atlanta. Why Atlanta? You know, that was a fortuitous set of circumstances. I was living um, in Sweden uh, at the time. I grew up in Arkansas. I lived in Nashville for like five years. So I was kind of a, um, a child of the South. And then I was... Uh, living over in Sweden for like three years and came back to America. I thought I was going to live in, I went back to Nashville, but it just didn't feel like home anymore. And on a whim, I went and visited a friend in Athens and had the most incredible weekend of my life. Athens, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, it was so much fun. It was, I met some great musicians uh, who I'm still friends with, uh, guys. I, I sort of stumbled into this really creative community in Athens. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is what I've been missing. So I moved there for a little bit and then realized um, that Atlanta was such a great city. I'd never spent any time here. And, um, so it was through that connection that maybe a year after being in Athens, I made it to Atlanta. Hmm. And, uh, and it's just has since I found it like a great creative and collaborative community here that it's not just one media. You can be um, a, a songwriter or a painter or a filmmaker in this city and there's a great cross-pollination that you don't have like in a place like Nashville which is kind of all sort of one type of yeah. artist. Is there a favorite child for you in terms of the music, filmmaking, could you pick which one gets fed the most? I, you know, music is kind of my first love, but I don't really see much of a difference between them. Like, my creative process is kind of the same. Uh, and you just, sometimes you find uh, an idea that has a home in a song, or if that doesn't, it, it, you, you might think it's a song and then it becomes script or an idea for a character or something you can apply elsewhere or vice versa you might play with a, a character and it just not work in a in the story you're writing so you throw it in a song and it finds its home there so uh, you know I started out as a musician and that's still my natural inclination but it, it's it, they build on each other because of the fact that you make films now when you're writing a song do you find yourself a lot of times imagining in advance what the, what a music video would look like <laughs> um, you know not necessarily the video I th but I do think in terms of place mm -hmm. and um, the setting or the world that a song might live in I kind of picture a visual um, sense of what's going on in, in a tune as it develops. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say, you know, not the video, because sometimes that is not necessarily tethered in reality or what's achievable. Um, but as, like, for instance, with the Oppenheimer Blues record, as I was writing that, those songs, it, a very visual landscape started to present itself mm -hmm. and it, in my mind as the lyrics developed and I realized oh this the world that this record exists is the New Mexico desert mm -hmm. and um, you could you know the, the, the idea of the dusty highways or the Los Alamos uh, nuclear facility like those images um, came up in the lyrics and uh, and then they started to uh, come out in the videos. Um, 
and some we could achieve, some we couldn't. I would have loved to have made a video in the, in the midst of a nuclear silo that <laughs> exists in New Mexico, but Uncle Sam probably would have something to say about that. <laughs> well, tell us about this debut album, Oppenheimer Blues. It, yeah, it's, uh, it's a record that was born out of uh, a time I was living in a motel in Albuquerque, working on this sci-fi TV pilot for CBS that never saw the light of day. Uh, they just made one episode, I think a few people in a boardroom looked at it and said, yep, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but I was living out there and I had a lot of time to meet people who, I, I never lived in the desert, I never lived out west for any extended period of time. And I met an amazing cross-section of people and started to see the stories of the shape, what shaped New Mexico and the desert southwest, uh, from Native Americans to the Spanish conquest to, you know, later on the uh, development of the atomic bomb. And they all kind of exist right on top of each other. And, yeah. And it sort of started to feed a creative energy. And, you know, I subsequently found out, like, people I really admire, I see why they move out there. Like, guys like Cormac McCarthy, or Sam Shepard, um, you know, writers who have this kind of uh, sort of very uh, visceral and, and clear landscape in their writing. It, it, it's magnetic in that sense. So the stuff, I, I just started to write songs um, at the film studio and then in the motel, these songs started to take shape. And, um, I didn't think it was going to be a record. I just, um, but then by the time that whole process was done, I realized, oh, I've got the, um, the, the makings of a record here. So we took them in, fleshed them out. And some of the songs worked, some didn't, but uh, presenting him with a band sort of was a great way to evoke the desert. Hmm. Right. You were just mentioning about feeding creative spirit. Yeah. What do you find your greatest wealth is for inspiration? It's everywhere around you. I mean, you. I, I'm one of those people that believe you can't sit around waiting for inspiration to hit. Mm -hmm. um, it's always there uh, if, if you know where to look, if you're quiet. You know, Tom Waits had a great line that uh, songwriting is like fishing. Mm -hmm. you, gotta, you gotta go down the river and you gotta get real quiet and wait a long time to catch the big ones. Um, and it's, it, you know, it's a good way of looking at it. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I travel a lot and we meet a lot of different people. And if you just stay tuned to that, you can find stories and fodder for writing everywhere you go. On the note of Tom Waits, who are some of your favorites in terms of writers and musicians? Oh man, well Tom Waits, you know, he's he's should be in yeah, you know the Hall of Fame of every every writer. Um, I love Leonard Cohen in the same vein of guys who just write um, uh, just great, great lyricists. Um, Elvis, James Brown, <laughs> um, you know, David Bowie, the Beatles, like those kind of big luminaries had a huge impact on me um, as a kid and, and even still today, it, you know. I'm still trying to figure out how to make a record like James Brown. <laughs> how much of an influencer, or how much are books a part of what you do? Because I know The Last Tycoon is an unfinished yeah. piece by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah. You a big reader? I, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that is one of the things I, I, I do to sort of feed the well. Uh -huh. And like going back to that creative well, the more you take in, um, be it music, film, places, people, um, and books are a huge part of that for me. I um, love Fitzgerald, I, you know, 
and as as I write or as I travel, I try to like create a reading list for where I'm going, <laughs> and uh, or if I'm in a place, you know, finding literature that is is from that. So you know, like when you're in the when you're in the Southwest, the Sam Shepard place, mm -hmm. are a great place to start. Or, um, David Roberts is a really cool historian of the Southwest and outdoors guy. Um, so some of his writing really affected the record. Um, it's just informing the, uh, the the space that you're looking at. So yeah, I, I read all the time, and uh, it it is always something that that can help. And you can you know steal a line or two if you. <laughs> if you're <laughs> subtle about it, if you get stuck in a lyric or you see something in a poem or in a line or a book, um, you can make that the first line of your song. When somebody listens to this album, Oppenheimer Blues, yeah. what do you want the listener to get from that experience? You know, I it would... Be my hope that a, the listener could be um, transplanted into a place that they haven't been, uh, taken to the, uh, the desert at night. The first song is very much uh, "Where Shadows Grow." is uh, about a guy driving around the desert who's got a little bit of a killer streak in him, and it is not. Uh, place that's necessarily rooted in reality mm -hmm. but it could be a place you're familiar with and you know if people open themselves up to it they can go on a, on a like a, a pretty uh, pretty fun journey to a place that they might not have been before what is the best thing about being John Gladwin <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know uh, I don't have much uh, room for comparison because I've never really been to anybody else. But you could imagine. I tell you, well, you know, I couldn't speak to theirs. It's just great, you know, it's the same as everybody, just being alive and you get in every day you get, we, you, everybody wins the lottery when they wake up mm -hmm. because you get another day to see what, what, what's out there mm -hmm. and uh, what's to come. Well, one of the things about this day and age is you, you just never know who's watching, you never know who's listening. So, in closing, what would you say to anybody who's out there? Oh, I'd say that they, uh, I hope they uh, dig the record and that there's something that they can find uh, that is uh, maybe illuminating or informative and, uh, and that they just enjoy it. Take what they want from it. You can't ask for anything more from an audience. <laughs> well, John, thanks for coming on the Paul Leslie Hour. Hey. Thanks for coming to there. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> hey, this is John Gladwin from The Last Tycoon. Uh, we're at there in Atlanta, and uh, I'm going to play a song that closes our new album, Oppenheimer Blues. It's called Fallen Off the Moon, and... Uh, since it's election day, we're going to uh, send the Paul Leslie Hour uh, outright with a little political tune. Revolution's over, trumpets turn to tweets. A rich man owned the city, and we're giving in the street. Freedom is a burden, we thought we'd never lose. Falling off the moon, off the moon. Yeah, we're falling off the moon. Don't put your trust in busted tigers. I burned my money by the light of dawn. The rich men need loans, now my money's gone. Some leaving town said he'd pay me back in June. Now we're 
falling off the moon Off the moon Off the moon Yeah, we're falling off the moon Don't put your trust in busted tires Off the moon up like trash in the street don't think about tomorrow yesterday's so sweet and i'll make it great again when the bomb goes boom yeah we're falling off the moon off the moon off the moon yeah we're falling off the moon don't put your trust Yeah, we're falling off the moon Don't put your trust in busted tack Say you feel you're certain But I know for sure Certain ain't worth nothing I've heard it all before so stop all your crying, strap up your boots Kick them bastards off the moon Off the moon Yeah, we're falling off the moon Don't put your trust in busted tigers Off the moon, off the moon Yeah, we're falling off the moon